So to, to finish off our exploration of bivariate data um, and how to display bivariate data, we'll talk about two special cases, um, the first being time series graphs. And so what time series graphs are, are essentially a way for us to represent, kind of like a scatter plot, um, bivariate data of the form t comma y, where the t just means it represents time. So we're really looking at tracking data over time. So it may be the secondary variable might be anything we are particularly interested in. So, but it depends on the time that we are interested in. So we're going to have a time scale that's going to be our horizontal axis. And then whatever variable we're interested in is getting um, tracked on the vertical axis. I have an example here. Um, this is a chart, a time series graph. The red uh, represents the actual data values. So there might be a data value here. Sorry. You may want to hear. Everywhere you see some word ja something jagged, that usually means that there's a data value there. Um, but it's just so compressed that we're looking at. Um, it looks kind of like a, a jagged line. But this is, this is the time series graph itself. The blue, on the other hand, is a trend line. So similar to what we were talking about in the linear regression video, there is a similar concept where we can create a trend line for a time series graph. But that's beyond the scope of this class. In any case, what we're representing here is over the time period of, um, so basically from 1970 to just about uh, 2015, we're looking at the personal savings rate um, of U.S. consumers. So how much um, they have saved away. And if it's a rate, then we're usually talking about some percentage of their total income or wealth. And so what you can see here is there's a, if you look at the trend line, there's a steady decrease from 1970 to about um, 2005, roughly, and then it trends back up. But there's a lot of individual variation in data points. So some relative peaks and relative lows. And those may correspond to specific um, historical events, um, or they can just be due to random sampling error. So time series graphs, very interesting, very ubiquitous. You'll find it in a lot of different fields. One really important thing to note is you want your time series to start, um, you want your vertical axis to be um, properly spaced out, evenly spaced. Same thing with the horizontal axis. Notice that these time values are set apart about roughly five, um, exactly five years. So January 1970 to January 1975, and so on every five years moving down the line. Similarly, with the personal savings rate, you want it to be um, evenly spaced apart so that you don't have any um, misleading trends in your graph. As for ge geographic charts, we are now talking about um, graphs of the form g comma y, but the g is a geographic location. So it can be a city, county, um, a state, and the y again is our variable at, at that location. So variable at location G, and G is our location. And while, you know, we can organize this however we want, the natural way to represent a geographic chart is to annotate a map. So I'm going to actually take us to a live website right now. Um, this website, covid19.california.gov, um, has a geographic chart for um, representing how many vaccine doses have been administered in the state, and it's disaggregated by county. So if you can think about this as every county, right, for instance, 
Sacramento County, um, that the G value would be Sacramento County, and it's represented on the map literally as the county um, lines separating it from the other counties. And its Y value is the total doses administered um, by county of residence. So people who live there, right, not necessarily that um, it was given in that county, although that, that tends to be the same. And so what we see here is, if this is this was last updated um, by my account yesterday, um, then what we're looking at is 92, roughly 92,000 people in Sacramento County have been vaccinated, probably mostly healthcare workers and um, individuals over the age of 65. One really important thing to note here is that with geometric, uh, sorry, geographic charts, representing data values as colors can be misleading because some counties are larger than others. Some states are larger than others. Um, this is a very common mistake, pitfall. Um, sometimes it doesn't matter so much, but sometimes it does because if we are trying to represent, um, for instance, the fact that the highest the county with the highest number of doses administered is Los Angeles. That's represented as a as a deeper blue. But there are some things to consider. For instance, um, the size effect, as I mentioned, Los Angeles has a lot of people. Right, they're the most populous county in the state. So, um, you know that effect is lost on us. We're just seeing the raw number. Um, another problem is that um, if you choose a certain color scheme, right, um, you may be accidentally uh, making this graph or this chart incomprehensible to someone with a specific kind of color blindness. Um, or the scale that you use your, your colors, it may be too similar. For instance, this is, I believe, Inyo County. No doses have been administered there. And we have another county, Tolare, which has 22,000 or close to 23,000 doses administered. But the colors look very similar. And so you're like, uh, you know, should that be colored differently? It's not very clear. Okay. But these are common pitfalls. And, you know, sometimes we can be gracious about it. Um, other times it can be a really misleading and, and poorly thought out um, statistical graph.